So, Sujit, I want to start by saying that this episode is special to me. Firstly, because I've been trying to understand what the purpose of this podcast is and what are the steps forward. We've had a short break in the month of June, July, August. I went to India and I just mm-hmm. got back. Probably you had your holidays too. Yeah. And what I wanted was and to create a platform which tells stories of people who are genuinely giving back to society mm-hmm. and actually keeping a part of their life mission as serving those in need. And when I did my research in the community, I found that a particular gentleman who comes from the same place in India as I do has a story to share. And that's why we are here today. Yes. So Sujit, welcome to the Rotary in Action podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's a great, great pleasure to have you here. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you. So the, um, the conversation, since we've had multiple uh, interactions. Before, we have done interactions. We've had uh, even talks together. Yeah. If I'm not wrong. Yes. So this is going to be a continuation of our friendship. For sure. But, I'm, but the objective here is to really dive deeper mm-hmm. into understanding who is Sujit and where are you currently? And what is going on in your life right now? Can you give us a little bit of a brief information? Sure. So uh, my name is Sujit Koshi Vargas. Like you mentioned earlier. Thank you so much, guys. Such a pleasure once again to be here. Uh, I'm a banker by profession. I'm a motivational speaker and a personal trainer, a fitness personal trainer uh, based out here in the UAE. That's my that's my job. So you are a fitness personal trainer. Yes. You and to bring it back and give um, context to why it's special for you to be where you are today is because a few years back, it wasn't all glamorous and easy going as for you because as I understand, you were in Bangalore, just like I was yeah. during university days and you met with a severe accident that changed my life, changed your life, resulted mm-hmm. in you being on a wheelchair yeah. for the rest of your life. Can so, you give us a little um, bit of context about David, that? like back in 2013, I was doing my final year in my college. I was studying for bachelor's in commerce in Bangalore. And uh, in my final year, about a month before my final exams, I met with a bike accident. So till date, I have no recollection of how exactly the events took place. But I was told that my bike crashed into a truck and I lost balance and I crashed into a wall of uh, a shop which broke down and fell on me. So this is what was told to me. And uh, I was in coma for the first few days. And when I woke up, I was told that I had two major surgeries that were done on my body. So I suffered. Uh, multiple f- injuries all across my body, but the injury that changed my life was my spinal cord injury. So due to that, I'm paralyzed below my chest. So that's what happened. Life completely changed uh, for me from that day. I wouldn't say it was an immediate realization on my current state as soon as I woke up because there was so much of trauma, so much of medication, so much of like probably I was awake for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day for weeks until they finally had to take me off the serious meds because I had I suffered 18 fractures on my skull. So the injuries were very grave. The chances of survival were 40% as told to my doctor, by my doctor. My doctor told my dad, walks into my dad's room and he was like, we're doing the surgery on your son. So it's like going to be a six hour for his head skull surgery and another six hours because we got to implant two rods on his spinal cord because his spinal cord is injured. And his chances of survival after the surgery are going to be 40%. And they had no other choice. I mean, that was the best option the doctor gave me. And um, yeah, I survived. Yeah, so basically, I'll tell you, um, in that hospital, there's there are de- different levels of degrees of surgeries. Like level eight is like something like a heart transplant. Okay, that's like, that's like the most extreme you can even think of. Mine was a level seven surgery. So coming back from something like that was considered miracle. So I was known as this miracle child. And my recovery was known throughout the hospital because nobody expected me to survive. I mean, I've had 18 fractures on my skull. I could have gone brain dead at any point. I've had maxillary fractures. My eye was depressed down. I was told I would be blind. I've had my spinal cord was injured at my T5, T6 level. I had three ribs broken, piercing my lungs and whatnot. I had blood all passing inside and out of my body. I mean, and I went into coma. I was on a ventilator. So the chances of survival were very slim, but I did. I did and I, I went, I was in coma for the first four days and on the fourth or fifth day is when I, I, I opened my eyes for the first time. Yeah. This is all back in 2013. All back in 2013, I was 20 years old at that time. 
final year of college, 20 years old, a month before my birthday. And this is what happens to me. Can you also tell us uh, where in Bangalore this happened and which hospital? So basically, I were uh, this the incident happened in Madiwala. Uh, I think many of you know Bangalore, Madiwala is yeah, like the, the, bus stop? the bus stop area. And uh, I was admitted in Fortis Hospital. Fortis Hospital in uh, Bandrakata. So this was life. Um, I mean, immediately from the person I was, who was living a king size life. You know, I was a basketball player. I was in a boxing academy. I was very athletic. I was very, I was adrenaline rush was off the roof, you know, at that age of 20 years of age. It was, life was just perfect and beautiful and you feel you're on the top of the world. And suddenly this happens and I find myself with so many people asking me questions because for me to come to my normal senses took a very long time to realize what's happening, to realize that I am actually in a hospital, to realize surgeries are actually done on me, to realize that I actually cannot move my legs, to realize that I cannot feel my legs. Um, so it was a gradual, gradual process, you know, day by day, the pain was too much. I spent about a good month and a half in, uh, in Bangalore. And then I was moved to CMC Vellur for rehabilitation. So in rehabilitation, I spent a good three months just learning the basics, you know, learning how to, um, how to pick things from a ground, how to move to a bed, how to take a shower, like everything that a child is taught, I was taught over again because I had no control over my body. Like I would, I could feel my arms, but anything below that was numb for me and I didn't have balance. I couldn't sit on a chair without holding on to something. So there was so much of these uh, problems that I started facing, you know, which I was never used to. So I was always very conscious. I was very careful because I didn't want to fall, you know, and then a fall will result to worse injuries. So I, um, so initially three months was just teaching me how to learn, pick things from the ground, move to a chair, how to take a shower, how to move in and out of a car how to sleep uh, and the basic uh, rehabilitation. So th things but change when I come out in the real world. It so I want to ask you a question. So 20 years old in Bangalore. 20 years, yeah. I know the feeling of yeah. being a 20 year old in Bangalore because you're literally at the highest. I Because I, I understand this so well because even I studied in Bangalore and I was there too during my college mm -hmm. days. And a similar incident happened to my closest friend. Uh, so, so, a friend of mine that uh, I, I used to, I still consider as someone who's, who used to be closer to me than my own brother mm -hmm. because we were so close. And um, this incident happened to him where he met with the bike accident, but he did not survive the accident. His name is Daniel Lewis. Mm -hmm. And we grew up together in Kuwait. We moved to Bangalore together and had a fantastic party days. You know, that initial yeah. coming into Bangalore. And I, uh, the reason I'm bringing this into context is because I really understand the height of Untouched, I'm touch. so ha hyped, yeah. you know, the clubs and the partying yeah. and the friends and the, and then from that height where you're probably, you're, you're a social guy, you must have had so many friends. I mean, you know, at that point I was like, I felt physically I was on because I was in a boxing academy. I was always in pretty decent shape since my childhood. Uh, the highest point in your life. You yeah. Like being in a boxing academy, you feel like no one can touch you. Yeah. you know, you're like physically super, so very superior. You feel that, yeah, you know, bike racing was my craze. So I used to love speed and adrenaline. And on top of that, like, you know, back in school, I was very athletic. I was in the sports team. I was the sports captain. I was in the basketball team. Very athletic. A lot of big social circle, like you said, the partying. Everything was just on. You feel you're on top of the world. It was at that prime age. And something like this happens to me. And the very next thing is uh, people telling you, showing you sympathy. Let, let me start with sympathy. Sympathy is a word I want to start with more than anything else. Sympathy was the first thing I got which you're not used to, which I wasn't used to. And so all the friends that hyped you up, have you're having friend, fun mm, with mm. the circles, the social circles. Now I want to understand from that to height, the top position of mm. fun and, uh, you know, excitement of Bangalore down to a point where you can only rely on your parents. Yeah. Can you explain that journey of how your identity changed and how you dealt with having it all and then completely losing having to all. losing it all to restart from ground yeah. zero. Can you really help me understand? So, uh, David, I'm going to tell you with my experience and with experience of many other spinal cord injury survivors, I know who are on almost on the same league, having the, you know, most amount of friends are living life to the fullest. So the first few things I noticed after I came back to Kerala, because then I shifted to Kerala, a lot of things change. First of all, things that changed was the way people look at you. And suddenly now from the person, what I felt, this is how I used to say it. 
from the person that they knew me for the biker I was or probably you know that drill and rush guy or the crazy guy I was or the guy who jumps first in everything suddenly I'm just I'm none of that and I'm just labeled as a guy in a wheelchair so the friends of the 100 suddenly reduced to 50 to 20 to 10s and then probably you have a handful if you're lucky who calls you back and because this is something i face you know i used to be a person who's living on the edge every single day you know i say this living on the edge hanging by a thread because i would do something that's so risky but i'd still do it you know because it gives you that adrenaline rush and that's the way you live life at that age right and uh, and you think there are you have like a ton of friends like right? cuz you have friends 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 at that age and suddenly when i find myself in a wheelchair and i look around i don't see much i don't that the calls stop coming because you're not in that scene anymore you're not partying anymore you're not in clubs anymore you're not in social meets anymore you're Jordan you're, you're recovering you're literally recovering fighting for your life and you really don't find a lot of people around you at that time and that's when you know when the life really hits you on what it is you know and that it is all you for yourself and then the only people you can actually bank on and listen me out you can actually bank on is your parents i mean the family the family was the only one that actually stands by you and you know when people say that you don't you don't really listen to it that much but end of the day believe me when something like this happened to me is when i realized end of the day it's your family they were my they were my biggest strength to grow to where i am today so tell us who who's in your family my mom my dad i have two beautiful sisters and both of them are married one is migrated to canada and one is uh, right here in dubai and they were did you grow up in dubai by the way uh, so i did most of my schooling in dubai i did about till my 9th or 10th grade in dubai and 3 years in kerala which school in dubai I just Indian high school. Okay. We're using a lot of short forms here. People who might not know Indian high school. I did till my tenth grade, ninth grade, and uh, three years I did in Kerala. And then after Kerala is when I moved to Where Bangalore. Kerala? So Kerala, I shifted two schools. One I did in was in Kottayam, Pala. Uh, it's called Labour India Public School. And the other one was in uh, Chengna Sheri, which is a uh, good shepherd school. Just for context, I'm also from Kottayam. Mm. And, yes, uh, we spoke. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, absolutely love the place. I have, you know you know I, I was telling you like I have very close connections with Kottayam I've stayed in Kottayam more than I've actually stayed in my own place so yeah I like the place so your own place is Maavelli Kera okay. okay which is in Alappi district so you finished uh, high school till 12th grade in Kerala and then 3 years in to? Kerala and then I then I moved to Bangalore then Bangalore is where I did which Jane College Jane University Jane. um staying in one year in JC road two years in BTM layout and yeah 3 years in that college uh studying bachelor's of commerce I I know you know what Bangalore <laughs> know. you have a lot to say you know it's like you don't have family over there it's just you yeah, your yeah. friends day and night there's no yeah. it's it's your world you know Bang and Bangalore is a place I would say that everyone feels is home yeah whether you're from Bombay whether you're from Kerala whether yeah. you're from Gujarat Punjab wherever Bangalore is a place that you feel that oh yeah. you know what I'm a Bangalorean like if you ask yeah. me today I tell people yeah you know as much as I feel I'm from Kerala I feel I'm from Bangalore as well but I probably wouldn't say that about Goa I wouldn't say that about Chennai I wouldn't say that about Gujarat you know I'm just giving you a yeah, idea a, because Bangalore yeah. has that element to it and you being from you Bangalore in, you you know what I mean yeah. you can actually call it home yeah without having fear like oh, you know what I'm not a local no it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you can still call it home actually it's how you we call Dubai home like okay, even though we're not that. locals tell me about that how, don't how long you love have you been here? don't you love oh my god my I mean I'm born and raised here. Yeah. And there's there's nothing like Dubai for me anywhere in the world. I mean that's how much I love this country, you know. I mean I mean I've seen so many sides of this country and I'm 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 grateful and I'm happy. Let's let me say that to be here, to even be here in this country. I mean I can I can proudly call it my home. My dad has been here for close to 50 years of his life. My mom almost the equal and my sisters grew up here. I have a lot of family that grew up here. So we know Dubai as home more than we can actually relate back to our home countries maybe because we have spent a lot of our time over here together you know with the families and cousins so yeah so it's been a very very long time we literally got to see i would say a very good transition of dubai to what it has become today because at least when i started there was no jbr marina i mean that came out way later you know so i we have seen quite a bit and my dad has been legendary lucky enough to see even bigger transitions of dubai from how it has grown over the years what I find so special about you is that you've gone through a certain adver- adversity in your life which completely shaped the the trajectory of your life changed me completely, so completely changed you completely new breed altogether you've used that slump to reconstruct your life yeah so you've told us that you've gone through 
terrible times just to come back to being a normal person again mm. from walking to wheelchair to a new identity to new friends can you explain what got you from down there mm-hmm. back to a certain a new normal so i want you to understand the kind of degree of hurt and pain i went through to start with which might not be common at all i underwent 18 surgeries till date i've had my i've seen i've seen myself walk in and out of icus more than i've probably at anywhere else at that point of time blood transfusions blood transfers needles poking me in and out so i've been through crucial amount of pain crucial uh months i've stayed about 3 months my longest was staying 3 months in a hospital for about four surgeries many surgeries failing doctors malpractices and this is started from the year 2013 till 2017 touch wood no 18 18 is when my surgeries finally stopped and i've been out of surgery god bless i've been out of surgery in 18 so can you imagine from 13 till 18 going in and out of hospitals and surgeries and every time i felt i was getting better a surgery i was i was recovering i was becoming better something or the other goes wrong in my body with the with an old treatment that happened and i'm back in a hospital which again means a lot of um needles a lot of medication i've had adverse effects on my body because of medications i still remember heavy doses of antibiotics um so so at this point right and then one part like we just spoke earlier the friends leaving factor and then you find yourself at one point of life like you know now what do you do like you find that point it's it's it it builds up and it doesn't take forever it doesn't take a very long time you know when you, you're seeing every single day of life being like this you find yourself alone you're not working you're not studying you're in a wheelchair what do you do now and then you ask yourself and then you see because for me it was like there were tons of limitations placed on me people telling me sujit this is not possible that is not i couldn't even get out of my own house without asking 10 people permission and even if they gave me how do i go out i need some i always needed somebody with me you know even to do the most basic of things so then i asked myself you are at this point of your life where you have every single human being placing limitations on you everyone telling you what you can can and can't do so i had an option at this point i either could give up and stay in a room and you know what just tell people listen i'm in a wheelchair i'm a spinal cord injury person so i don't think i can do anything for the rest of my life and that would be acceptable by people because of the sympathies and the factor and how the way my life changed or i could take a big chance because this is not who i am i'm not a person who's driven by sympathy i'm not a person who wants sympathy man i used to be good at what i used to do you know i was not i wouldn't just be a sports captain of a school i wouldn't be in the basketball team i wouldn't be racing i wouldn't be in in a boxing club if i did, if i wasn't a little extra you know what i mean than regular so i'm like this is not me and i have to change this but what do i do i got to prove it started with proving people wrong but then today it's just being better and better than who i was yesterday for context i've i've noted this down because yeah. this is mind blowing to me the things you have to have done so far you have gone scuba diving yes you've in dubai you've gone skydiving meaning you've literally jumped out of a of plane, a plane. You've pulled a car that weighs 120 kilos. One thousand, one thousand two hundred. One thousand two hundred kilos. Yeah. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The jet goes. Oh, it's me. He's not even scrubbing right now. He has got this. He is pulling that car like it's nothing. Only using the strength in his arms right now. And I ask, make some noise. We are pulling this car. Oh my gosh, it's it. Oh my gosh, it's it. You wanted to do two cars. I said one. I reckon you could have done two. Give him a big round of applause. Virgin.
And the list goes on here. And now you are on the track to being a, a part and a representative of the mission of Dubai to become the most accessible city in the world. Because we started this conversation with limitations, trying to get out of this slump where we are in and yeah. the new identity. And now you're at this place where you're break, creating world records. I have to doing give, the impossible. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. in fact, from our conversations, what I've understood is that through your music and you rap and you create yeah. music, yeah. you're inspiring other people to break through their limitations and, and understand that, hey, whatever you have going on is created in your own mind. Correct. You're doing Correct. You're showing it by example. You're showing the lead by example is, is the tagline I use for it, David. Uh, when we spoke about earlier from the hardships and then when I decided to pick my life up, so I started, how do I start? Where do I start was the question. And the question came up with, fine, what are the limitations people place on me? So just every single thing was not possible. But one thing which started, which gave me an idea was sleeping in my room was said that it's not possible. But then I, um, because I couldn't, nobody could physically walk up there. Nobody could climb oh, up there. you mean your room was My on room the was floor. on the first floor. So. Um, I tried to figure a way and everyone is telling me it's not possible. So what did I do? I climbed upstairs by sitting on the each step. I used to sit on each step and then climbed uh, up, 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 18 steps up. And then I reached on top and then I picked myself from the ground to an equivalent size, uh, like a small bed. Then from the bed to my wheelchair, like a chair, then to my wheelchair and then to my room. And morning I had to sit down. This is completely not the conventional way of climbing up a staircase. But for me, my goal was fulfilled. My purpose was complete. And the minute I did that, I started, the, the thing that triggered me was this incident, like, man, there's so many people in your life telling you, this is possible, that is possible, you're not capable of it, you are capable of it, you're born with it, you're lucky. Who's, who defines this? Somebody whose mental capacity is so much. Someone's might be this much, others might be bigger. That's why you might hear so much of limitation from someone. And from another person, you might see a bigger limitation. But I'm asking you, what is not impossible? Is it because do you consider it impossible because you have said to your mind that it's impossible or it hasn't been done before? I started with, with needing help to hold, somebody should hold my wheelchair to just transfer to my bed or somewhere more stable because I was that weak to pulling cars, which people would have considered as completely impossible. You know, people consider, I did a lot of things that people, I joined the gym. When I joined the gym, people are like, Sujit, can you do anything in the gym? I didn't know. Today, I'm an official in fitness influencer for the Dubai Fitness Challenge. I used to travel, before I got a car, I used to travel by metro and buses from Sharjah, wheeling myself from Sharjah to Dubai, catching metros and buses all the way to business way, wheeling another 1500, uh, another 50 or 50 meters to UFC gym, working out in UFC gym and coming back to Sharjah. Five and a half hours. My workout used to take me every single day in a wheelchair, just me and my headphones wheeling through the streets of Dubai just for one purpose, because UFC gym had boxing bags. So I'm asking you, so this is how it builds up, you know? So as you progress in life, you understand that a lot of people's limitations, what they tell you are what they have in their head of the current scenario. Meaning, if they were in your situation, this is what they think is possible. But I'm in this situation. And for me, I'm not settling down to be mediocre. And I'm trying to show other people in a wheelchair or not, you don't have to be limited by people's opinions. You don't have to be limited by people's options. I mean, I was placed a hundred different limitations. Those same, same people now share my videos and be like, hey, look at this inspiration. You know, now they go about and telling about me. Why? Because I showed it that it's possible. The whole idea of pulling a car, uh, 1,250 kilos. I used to train with two cars pulling back to back until on the day of the event, my back hurt so much. So we had to limit it to one car. So initially I was practicing with 2,500 kilos. And I was able to move it. But the point was, if I asked someone, do you think a person in a wheelchair could pull a car? Maybe a lot of people would be like, oh, I don't think so, unless he's a strong man or he's insanely huge. But I wasn't that big, you know. Uh, but when I did it, if you saw the impossible happen in front of you, wouldn't you start thinking that probably that was a limitation you placed in your head? So imagine with life what can happen. I was one person, they thought my story would be done the day my accident happened. But I think my story just started the day my accident happened. You know, that's very inspirational. 
because you coming back out of such a situation, coming back stronger, now being somebody that people can look up to as, hey man, if Sujit can do it, I can do it. I think exactly, exactly my my point. You know, like if I can do it, why can't you? I mean, I ask the people who's walking and running. Maybe it's not the best of examples, but dude, if you look at it, this guy's doing it in a wheelchair, which is way harder, right? It's it's the same. I mean, equal opportunities we all have, but yeah, it's way harder for this guy. If he can still have the will to do it, and I tell this line. I mean, I used to work out from Sharjah. I used to go to Business Bay because it had boxing bags. I tell people you want to get fit in life because fitness is very important. That's something I promote, you know, like with my life. You know, fitness because fitness is what saved me. Me getting fit was me getting back my self confidence. Me getting back my self confidence was me taking the first step towards employment, towards the first step towards trying something more different, towards first step of getting outside my own house. So fitness gave me that physical con that physicality which gave me my confidence. You know, I'm not that weak anymore. I'm stronger. I'm strong, and I just grew stronger, and it just boosted me up. I'm like, if I can travel from Sharjah to Business Bay to work out, you guys have somebody might have a gym in their own building, and they don't do it. Is this through but taking the bus? And uh, sorry, this is through public transportation. Yeah, what I used to take was the RTA buses. I used to travel from Sharjah, wheel about a good 200 uh, meters. Through Sahara Center Mall, get out of Sahara. It becomes Dubai. From Dubai side, I catch a bus to Gisey's Metro Station. Gisey's Metro Station, I change in Union. I get down in Business Bay Metro Station. Business Bay, I catch another bus. I go to Bay Square. I wheel another 50 meters to 50 or 20 meters to UFC gym. I work out for two hours and I do the same routine every single day before I got a job and now I have a car. Now life is more comfortable. But can you tell us about that? So now, where where you are right now? So. Uh, In in terms of employment, in terms of living, in terms of employment, in terms of your relationships, in terms of your personal life. Okay, bit, can you fine? Uh, so um, yeah, so I would say there was a lot of work that was done a couple of years ago, which made me in a better, comfortable state today. Like I mean, in my initial years, coming back to the bar, I I really worked very hard on my fitness in getting my word out there and passing on my message because for me. It was very important to pass my message of motivation on people to understand what you're truly capable of. I mean, I've seen, I see it, what I am truly capable of, and I think it's it's I'm, I have a vision about myself which is very strong, and very big, and I truly believe it's possible because I know what a person is truly capable of and how. I mean, from what I came from to where I'm going, it's it's a far journey, and this is there with every human being. Every man, every woman, every child, but it's all starts with, you know, David. It's all starts with mental. It's never the physical. People don't understand that. I think I'm very strong, very very strong mental. My mental game is: you throw something at me, I'm not going to break. Like I'm, I feel, uh, I feel I can take almost any hit and still stand. Like even though the hit might look like it broke me. But I think I'll, I I still like I self fix myself and get back up. So that's what you know. Over these years, over nine years of time, there were so many things that have come in a way that it would break me. But I did not allow it because even if it hit me and I fell on the ground, two days I would have sat on the ground feeling bad about it, feeling sad about it, feeling thinking why is this again and again happening to me. But on third day, I know my purpose and I rise back up. And that's what I tell every single one. You know, it's 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 not about. In the words of Sylvester Stallone, it's not about how much you can hit; it's how much about how much you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward, and that's what life is, and that's what I learned. Because it's there's there's never an end goal. No matter what I accomplish, there's always something more to be done. There's always something more to be done. There's always something more that you can get in life for yourself and for others. And I truly believe only if you add value and you value yourself and you believe yourself, you love yourself. that you think that you are worth something you will be able to help people around you so i know a lot of people are there who wants to uplift their kids their families their friends but it has to start within you you know you cannot just sit back and be like talk about it you have to make a movement it will be it will it will have a repel effect what does self love look like to you loving myself unconditionally in any circumstance that i have been i mean from what i have been i love myself because i know my i value myself let me say I for me self love is about valuing myself. I think I am I deserved to to be in good places. I deserve to have good people in my life. I deserve to be in a better state of life. You know and not 
not have someone's sympathy on me not have someone's um objections or rejections on me that's what i believe and uh, just to touch on a point and i feel i'm in the best place in the entire world for it because dubai i mean david i've mad love for dubai like this is like my home you know and the opportunities and the platforms dubai has given me i don't think any other place would have given me for me to be where i am today it it gave me a stand it gave me a it gave me a platform it gave me an opportunity and you know what an opportunity is all what i wanted the minute i got an opportunity that's the they gave me a platform to be equal they gave me fine there you go that's your that's your that's your call go take it and i took it and because of that whatever you mentioned before is what i've been able to achieve and probably much more you know but it it all started with uh, with me deciding that i have to change my life it was my because like i said there's always an option you can either go south where you are like you know what this is my life why is this happening to me let me give up or you can make a decision and you know you you can take a self call that your life is better than all these negativity your life is better than people's limitations and it's 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 meant for much bigger things i see a very very positive perception perspective that yeah. you have and uh, and i really like it because dubai as fantastic as it is absolutely i used to, when i moved in the first 5 months literally the first 5 months me being here if anyone asked me how's dubai i would say listen my vacation is ongoing it's still <laughs> yeah because yeah. dubai just gives me that vibe yeah. where i'm always on the move always connecting with yeah. people and it's a great vacation for me as all they like yeah. david it's been 5 6 months i'm like yeah man it's a vacation my life is great okay but there are times when things go down there are times when you got to you know do things and it gets hard sometimes that's how life is and uh, those challenges come but i want to look into what your day to day is and understand how these perspectives apply into your personal mm-hmm. day to day can you, you know, give you us know, a little more yeah bit of it's a, it's like you know even though we uh, everyone has ups and downs and i don't think so you will see a shining bright sun the next day unless you go through the darkness and i think it is important moreover than uh, not having i think it's important people should have bad days because only then when you tre- when you, you know when you're tested is only when you truly grow and i tell this every single time only when a person is truly tested they really know who they are or really know what you're made of and i think people should be tested only then you will get a reality check on where you stand in life and how strong you actually are when the time comes when it'll actually matter if you can stand up or not and that's very important for every single human being to do i mean when times were tested for me thankfully i shifted to a very strong side because i was not willing to settle down for mediocre forget mediocre i was not even settled down to be average i wanted to be great and that's my constant journey from then on so um it is important to fight the hardships because only through pain a person will grow this is my understanding of life only when you're given that adversity you know when you ask god something right you ask god give you um, give you uh, strength he's not just going to give you strength he's going to give you a situation to be strong you're going to ask him for um, food he's going to make you hungry so that you can uh, and give you a place to eat food you know so you ask so he's going to be placed in such situations that's how life is when you believe and you hope and you want it's life is going to place you in certain situations where you will be forced to be that person that time is when you're tested and that time it will show are you willing to be that person or not and if they think about it you have one life well, why i went so hard in life is because at one point i felt i lost everything like losing my legs i felt i lost everything i felt this life was not really that worth living you know i mean if i really have to talk to you from the heart it was very hurtful for me at one point of time but uh it is me thinking what more do i have to lose let me just take one last big swing at life and see how far that will take me and that took me pretty far so go out of life you know don't don't allow fear of things people usually are controlled by fear fear of uh not making it fear of losing fear of people's opinions of they even allow people's opinions to become their reality they have fear of how people might look at them you know basically a lot of fears and you allow all these fears block you from taking a chance to the next step but if you want to take you want something in front you have to be willing to let go of something else like you know everybody's like i want a job i want something big but you're not letting go of that something to allow space for something new to come in you know so it's it, it is a chance that's how life works it is a chance it is a risk it's calculated risks and you have to be willing to do things that nobody else is doing 
so th- that's what it is to answer your question on how do i manage like you say my day to day challenges you know i try to do things that i don't that is not done by everybody you know or at least it's not s- very safe and n- uh, normal in mine i would say because i mean i take a big swing at everything um i stayed with my parents after my injury for a couple of years and they traveled back to kerala 2 years ago i wanted my independence i mean every as i was progressing in life i wanted to be more independent and uh, 3 months ago in june i took a place of my own and i've been staying by myself so i cook i clean i do everything basically like running your own place you know you know all of this by yourself all right? by myself there's no helper i don't have a helper i don't have a maid i don't have someone who comes and checks on me it's all me by myself so when i told this to a lot of people first initially that you know what i'm planning to move and have a place of my own everyone is like so jitha you going to manage how you going to cook how you going to clean how you going to eat how you going to move in and out of the building in your car what if what if what if how you how you how you and how you, you drive as well and now i drive as well and today they are like oh sujit so what did you make what did this now they know like you know until people see something is possible they don't want to they don't believe that it is possible so if i have to be the person who has to show as an example to people out there like you know watch me i tell my brothers and sisters in wheelchairs like watch me see what i do i don't mind being that guy who can show you the way that things can be done and if you watch me and do it you will believe that it can be done and it is possible by anybody that is my message lead by example why not we all here coexisting we all here for a better purpose we are all here trying to uplift others nobody really wants everyone wants to rise on top no you're not going to rise on the top by yourself you rise by uplifting your people your community and everyone who has supported you to be where you are it is a group effort so one thing that um, i've been thinking about lately and it's so powerful is the concept of detachment detaching from your so for example we have a desire that is so strong that we sometimes start to obsess over why that objective has not been accomplished yet why that offer letter hasn't come in yet mm-hmm. why that relationship hasn't mm-hmm. converted it into a uh, marriage yet whatever it may be yeah. i have found in my personal life that the harder i hold on to something the more uh, difficult it is to attain it and it just becomes a very difficult process when i try to hold on and try to fix it and try to make it perfect and try to work on it so much mm. but sometimes when you just let it go and just think of this making today okay you know just letting today be all right being in the present allows those things that you desire to come closer into your life it's crazy i don't even know how to explain it but do you have any perception yeah so see david there are basically exactly. there are two things i want to say about this number one there are there are two things only in life right one are things you can control and one are things you can't control and every single human being has these two rules placed on their life there are actual things that you can control in life there are so many things no matter what you do no matter what string you pull no matter which contact you use no matter how much money you throw just you cannot control because it's outside your control zone now with things in life right i always say you put in the work the result will show now many a times it doesn't mean that the result will show immediately it doesn't even mean if you put your 110% in something you might get a result for it but that's just the way life is if if a person puts 110 in every single thing then he, everyone is a bill gates end of the day like it's not like every successful person has just got successful after doing the first thing 100% no right but they work they work you you work something fails you try another thing you work something fails you try another thing you work you probably get result 50% you work you get 25% third one you work you get probably 75% and it goes and it builds and it builds and it builds nobody gets successful overnight there are seldom success stories that you will hear that people had a success overnight believe me this is my research and things i've done there are very few people in world who has got lucky probably one music track got them the success they need and they continued for it or one business idea boomed and they got the they got the money and the revenue and the multi million dollar company that they are currently there's seldom very few people have done that everybody else journey is trying trying giving their 110% and it failing but the difference is when it fails they're still back at square one but with the experience of what they did in the previous past learning from it and then adapting with a new business plan and then again and again until something finally works so perseverance is the goal to is the key to life 
like if you ask me the most important thing in life i would say two things self confidence and perseverance you got to have self confidence that you are the best at what you do and the perseverance to go behind it that no matter what comes your way nothing can stop you you got to feel that you are that unbreakable machine you are that new breed you are that one of your kind you know that inspirational stories you hear bill gates mark zuckerberg michael jordan oprah winfrey walt disney all these are very famous inspirational stories that you got to feel that you are one of them you're that one who has tried it 200 times and you're still going to go about it and people are going to know about you why not why not feel that you can be great is my only question why do you think you know great stories fine i'll be a good enough story no be a great story believe that you can be a great story unrealistically dream about your own life expectations unrealistically think that you can be phenomenal only if you want to believe in it i know people may be like yeah what's the point in believing in it you believe in it then an action plan will happen for it because then you'll know what's the next step your next step it nothing is done overnight now the whole blueprint is not made overnight but you start step by step step by step so you have a face with some adversity you gave your heart and you your heart wanted it so bad and sometimes you don't get everything you want you know what i mean but that's the way life is but you still move forward and you probably probably what you wanted and you worked for you didn't get but you got something else probably that something else was in alignment to something better for you in your life you would never know unless that happens right i mean don't tell me i mean we all think would have had experiences where we wanted something to happen but ah uh, we didn't get that one thing but we got some substitute of it but that substitute turned out to be better or we landed up in some other route which was even better than the first route we would have taken right so th- that's the way life is you know you should just live the current moment i just say you know don't don't worry about the past because you can't do anything about your past believe me what's done 10 seconds back if this glass dropped there is no way i can change that there's no way i should have just kept the glass a little bit more inside i should have kept it safe i should have kept it in the center i should have had less water no it's done is done there's no way nothing i can control but i can learn from that experience and you know and then currently what i can do is be be conscious now be here be present being present is the most important thing i think a lot of people they go and they they kind of live in their past they live in the memories of their past they live in how good they were yeah you accomplished 10 different great things good good and you feel doesn't matter work matters today what you put in today matters you know a lot of people live in their past or they they live in their fears of what they were or or the negatives that they've had or they're so anxious about their future that you're not currently seeing what you have right now i always tell this exercise to people you know close your eyes take a big deep breath open your eyes and after releasing the breath just look around you look at the colors around you if you're at your home look at the walls you know think you have actually paid for that you're actually in a very comfortable sofa you have food on your table to eat you have you have food you have a car to go down you have a husband you have a wife or you have kids or you have a brother your sister or you are there even by yourself you have a tv in front of you you know you're so lucky you're so, you should be so grateful to the place that you are in because not everybody has it gratitude practice gratitude every single day your life will be 10 times better than where it is now believe me practice gratitude gratitude is something i practice every time i remember and i tell this to most of my friends when i travel to what shakes i drone i see the skyline of that of that of the of the, the view right and especially from livan where i come and i see the skyline of all these high rising buildings in dubai i just look at myself and i just smile like looking at those buildings and i tell myself i am in the best place in the world believe this dubai is the best place in the world and i cannot tell you with more affirmation than this because i know it first hand like the opportunities the place the comfort the people the diversity the luxury the the simplicity it's all all jumbled up in this one tiny ball called dubai and to be and stay in a place like this there's nothing like it so i think we all should be truly grateful to to the place that we are in you know even if dubai or if you're anywhere else as well you should be grateful for life you should be grateful for what you have and don't always wish 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 that you had that work towards it great hoping for something and wanting it and needing it and doing something about it is different but just don't always spend your life hoping and wishing that you were in a different place than not what you are currently you want to be somewhere then do something you haven't done before you will get there believe that you will get there
So, I'm actually really, actually really pumped <laughs> with this conversation. I like it, man. Uh, I you have so the thing here is that you've got a genuine energy about you, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's very positively contagious. And I'm really feeling it right now because you know the internet is flooded with positivity. Mm. Uh, I would even say I'd go as far as saying that. uh you can be addicted to listening to positive messages yeah but then there's a fresh air of hope over here because i know that i'm talking to someone who's genuine and that has that's adding to my life in a very positive way yeah. and i want to say thank you for that before we get to it and you know my story from so many years yeah i mean we know each other from quite a while now right yeah yeah thank you thank you for having me and be able to spread this message out there to so many other hope we can help somebody else listening to this as well awesome now the thing i want to get into right away is <clears throat> you are on a mission to drive or rather help dubai mm-hmm. reach its goal of becoming one of the world's most inclusive societies yes you're doing that by raising awareness by telling your story by spreading your message of positivity for two people of determination and asking them to redefine themselves through fitness yeah redefine themselves through their passion for music like how you have it whatever it is in them release it and and don't be bogged down by what happened to you but use it as a platform to recreate a new you yeah and i want to hear from you what is your perspective vision for dubai to be one of those the the most accessible city to buy from what i have seen you know with the great vision of these leaders over here yeah. in terms of uplifting everyone you know because dubai is a home for every expat every local yeah. it's there's no differentiation if you because we stay in dubai from so long we know that you know it's not the outside world i don't know how it looks but it's like one big family here. one you know, big every, family everyone is just there's so much respect among so each much other. of respect there's yeah. so much of love and there's so much of things that are taken care yeah. by the government you know by dubai and no place like it in terms of ex- inclusivity over the years i've seen so much project so much initiatives that's been done by the government by many pr- semi private sectors that they're doing in keeping in mind people of determination for example for example i'll just talk about emirates nbd Emirates NBDs. I remember many of their initiatives. One of the few were having Braille in some of their ATM machines. Especially, there's one, if I'm not wrong, in City Walk, where uh, even a blind person can come and uh, uh, get, get the cash. You know, there was there were twelve, I think twelve uh, special ATMs as such. Many of them with wheelchair accessible. Many of them, you know, like Brailles and you know, catering for different people of. people of determination you know and in terms of accessibility dubai making certain rules about inclusivity uh, accessibility inclusivity can you, but can me you tell myself more? me myself you know i um, my journey over the years started also about people of determination to empower them because first it started solo watch me do fitness do the same but then it became more about accessibility because accessibility is the number one challenge i know a lot of people who tell me so jit i want to wheel myself but i'm not sure I'm not sure of this. I'm not sure of that. There's a footpath. What do I do? What do I do? So and so forth. So, back in 2019, with along with Dubai Fitness Challenge, we had gone out and I started reviewing. I mean, the first step what I did was reviewing gyms for people of determination. Okay. So I used to go about to almost every gym I could find at that point of time, which were you know they agreed to have me in. Uh, so you know I could do a workout. We could film over there, and I used to film about how I could use every single machine and every single equipment about their washrooms, about their place, the area, the space, the machine, the comfortability. Walking in and out of the place, I reviewed everything, at least of what I could do. So somebody else, because a lot of people have questions like, I want to join a gym. I don't know which join which gym I can join. Some people tell me there is gyms near my place, but none of them are really accessible. So I started on this mission of promoting accessibility. like cuz i already did a video on how accessible the metro and the buses in dubai were and then the next thing was uh, was for uh, <clears throat> sorry with the gyms what i did but my vision what i really want to see this country going forward is it is not easy being in a wheelchair it is not easy being a person of determination there's a lot of expenses that come on families for medicines and taking care on a regular basis because there's a lot of fixed expenses i have to bear myself you know because i'm in a wheelchair for many different needs of mine 
So that's something I would see because Dubai is very accepting to inclusivity and they're trying to make Dubai more inclusive in terms of accessibility. We did a movement in terms of employment with the Dubai tourism as being uh, giving us the venue to host. Um, and we want to cater that in terms of well-being, in terms of sports, in terms of academy. We want children this to be implemented in schools. But I also want, you know, in the healthcare sector to have more like free treatments, you know, for people of determination, free medical, because some children are there, I know personally, whose parents bear a huge cost just keeping those children alive. So that is something I would see Dubai moving into in terms of, because Dubai provides free parking, free salik. These are some amazing benefits, 50% of uh, phone bills for people of determination. I would love to see that being highly implemented on a different level in terms of, uh, in medicine, because medical is, the number one priority I would say for any person of determination because I I am one and I know any other person of determination whether in a wheelchair or not the first thing that their parent and they have themselves have to look into medical expenses so that is something I wish Dubai was going to look something into more seriously and you know give them benefits over there and then in terms of academy that's something I wish Dubai looks into forward where you know we have uh, so my management I'm managed by touch management Jessica who is a person of determination para Olympian she uh had released two books in which the main character is a person with determination. Mm. You know, so this is when your children sees this at a very young age that, oh, there is somebody without a hand, there's someone without a leg, uh, somebody is in a wheelchair, somebody is autistic, somebody is uh, maybe blind, somebody has a hearing. This should be normal, not grow up in a certain age and be like, oh, who is this person that's out of the box? It's because you're not trained from such a young age. Now, today, so many people are aware of this. And, but some people are not trained enough. So that is also what Touch is doing, you know, which the management Touch is doing talent agencies because what they're trying to do is they are trying to initiate a program where they are going about and educating cafes, restaurants, companies, schools, people on the basic etiquettes on how to deal with a person of determination. Okay. Like a lot of people, you know, they, I've had people who come up to me and they tell me, Sujit, uh, we don't know how to react or how to deal with a person of determination. I don't know, should I ask you for help or should I just take your wheelchair? So one thing a lot of people don't realize is one of the most offended things I can get by is if I'm sitting somewhere and someone just comes and moves my wheelchair. Mm. It is literally saying, David, if you're sitting here or let's say you're sitting in there, there are a bunch of chairs, someone wants you to move. They just come pick you up by your shoulders mm. and move you. Mm. How offended would you get? Mm. That's exactly how I feel if that's done to me on a wheelchair. If I'm want trying to go somewhere and somebody just comes and starts pushing me. No, no, no. Mm. Let me help you. Let me help you. Mm. It might think they might think that they're doing something good. That's but very, uh, very, fe it feels bad for the person who's in the wheelchair because I am in no control. Then mm. suddenly the person, even though they're in good intentions, I, I feel that I'm suddenly in no control of my own body. So that mm. that's even worse feeling. So we're trying to have this education program. Uh, where we are going about in different places, companies, schools, cafes, wherever, every single institute, every single cock nook corner of the UAE, starting with Dubai, to educate them on these are the things that you can do to make your place mm. a little bit more wheelchair accessible, a little bit more people of determination friendly, and to understand on how you can react to them, how you can talk to them. And then hopefully in terms we can go about a, with employment, make that a bigger step and, and see how we can go about it further. And I think Dubai is very welcoming and open to that. I just hope we can pass on the right message to the right people for that. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's a goal overall. And me as my personal, what do you ask for my personal goals as well? I want to start my mentorship program where I'm mentoring people, you know, because David, there are certain things in life that is learned only through storms. No matter what you do, you will never learn it. Otherwise you learn it only when you go through the toughest and the toughest battles ever. And I am in a position where I want to uplift Millions like me. I want to uplift every single buddy listening to me because why not? This is my purpose. I like, I like upliftment. I like making somebody in a better state and making them believe like stop looking outside, look within yourself because I did that and I know the results what has found me. So eventually I want to start my programs where I'm doing that for again, the same, the companies, the schools, the people, you know, because everybody needs to hear it. Every janitor, every CEO, every single human being from the top to the bottom. So we've understood the, the mission of touch, which is, I think very noble and yeah. I'd love to see how I can get involved in sp spreading the message and spreading awareness. And, uh, Jessica, someone I follow on Instagram 
and uh, her message is also very inspiring and that and she's somebody that i really whose content i really enjoy watching because i love it when people are breaking limitations and going forward yeah. and showing the way for other people now i want to talk about you your mm-hmm. personal goals we are in 2022 i don't want to you know using the the conversation we had where why are we planning too much ahead into the future uh, keeping that as reference without worry and anxiety but i want to understand what your um what your image of a future for yourself looks like continuing down the path that you're in what is the message that continuing down the path when i really want to be in a position where i can influence and i can actually make a lot of people by my words and actions and my lifestyle make them in a better place for themselves i want to be a big speaker where i can influence and i can actually touch millions millions of people out there Why? i mean that is my goal because i have seen that as my life purpose you know because there are some hits not many can take i don't think everybody even though i tell you that you know you take a hit take a hit but keep moving forward but i genuinely don't think everybody can do it in the same pace that i did and i'd so i'd feel i mean everybody has a different purpose in life everybody is built different everybody is made out of something or the other i feel i'm made out of something really really tough and uh, i have seen the impact when i started motivational speaking i used to talk in some schools some companies here and there and i have done some interviews and i remember this one very incident that changed my purpose way stronger than what it already was was when i was in uh, dera city center my dad was dropping me this was back in 2017 18 dad was dropping me to dewar city center because i was meeting some friends and As soon as I got out of the car in the parking lot, a lady came up to me and she's like, "Hey, aren't you Sujit?" I'm like, "Yes." She's like, "Oh, I saw you on uh, a t- the TV channel. I saw your interview." I'm like, "Oh, thank you so much." She's like, uh, "You know what? I've actually share your videos on Facebook to my uh, nephew." I'm like, "Thank you so much." Saying that, she broke down in the middle of the parking lot, and I was stunned. I'm like, "What? What did I say?" She's like. you know he had a bike accident and he's in a wheelchair and i send him your videos of you speaking and you working out as motivation to that boy and he sees your videos and he becomes stronger and he gets uplifted when that was told to me for the first time david i understood my journey is not just about working out and it's not just about fitness it's 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 or just speaking it's way stronger because there are people because i didn't know who this person was i have not never seen her form in my life and she's breaking down and she's crying in the middle of dcc there are city center parking lot telling me she sends her vi- my videos to her nep- ne- uh, nephew so that he gets inspiration watching my videos and she does that and i've had so many people over the years tell me that from india from new zealand and many other countries whoever connects with me on facebook saying for themselves there is a girl I remember from Kerala who saw my video of climbing stairs and she did the same thing and she messaged me I have a lot of people who has messaged me about the most random things in life not they're not people of determination but they talk about their very very personal life to me which probably you would not even speak to your own parents or your spouses about they've told me such deep dark secrets about themselves because they hope that I might have a solution to their problems because that's a storm that they have not seen yet and they do not know how to cross it and they're asking me do you know how can i cross this storm so when i'm placed in a position as such it is my responsibility to do something why why would i be selfish and just do things for me i mean yeah i have accomplished i've got there's there's a title i've got masala award most inspirational personality i'm a personal trainer etc etc but after that what right you need to do something that's bigger because it's never about you it's never about you it's always about the people that's with you for me my only goal is to give a life to my parents my family that is way better than they that they can imagine that's my goal that's why i drive myself that's why i drive myself to work harder to be harder only if i can push myself to be better for me within me then things outside will change everybody wants something to change i know people want to change everything they want their surroundings to change nothing will change unless you change something within yourself you have to be in a position to be able to provide for people to give back to people that people can look at you and know 
that they are strong because you're strong so i cannot i i genuinely feel there's a lot of energy people put into me that i cannot just stop everything one day and just give up because that's a responsibility i have because i have a commitment to deliver there are people who watch me there are people who draw energy from me and the minute i give up it's not looking good you know what i mean yeah, it's not yeah so i have to stay strong for that way and and it and it keeps me going and i'm blessed i feel in a way because i'm i'm tough i'm mentally very tough and i do not break very easily at all and i, I believe that i believe that about me and i believe in myself long and realistically whether everyone is against me or not i have a lot of faith and determination and belief that someone above watches me and i have and i he's got my back so only thing he's asking me to do is go for it don't 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 fear don't don't let anything fear you i don't amazing i have to say that i'm incredibly privileged to have this conversation with you because i do feel like i'm in a space in my life where i've 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 uh, i've be- where i i needed this talk i needed to meet you and uh, have this conversation with you so i'm really grateful that we had this time thanks man i am too we had this call and on behalf of the rotary community in the uae which has sponsored our podcast has given this wonderful venue to us which is jumeirah creek set hotel yeah. and has given me the opportunity to meet amazing people like you on behalf of the rotary clubs and the rotractors of which we are also a part of and all the people in dubai really that you are in impacting through your message i really want to say thank you so much for trying to be better every day thank you thank you david my pleasure and i would love to be i would love to continue being a part of your mission for sure and uh thank you so such much such a pleasure brother always thank always so be much. one thank you thank you